Thanks, Mike. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ernest Lau. I'm the manager and chief engineer of the Honolulu Board of Water Supply. I really want to take, uh, say mahalo to everybody, especially to our customers here at the Board of Water Supply, for taking the time away from your families and coming out tonight to learn more about this very important issue to our future. I also want to introduce my staff. I have my deputy here, Ms. Ellen Kitamura. If you could wave or stand up. Um, I also have the head of our water quality division, Mr. Owen Kawata. And I uh, have the head of our communications office, Sean Nakamoto, along with her staff chief, Tracy Antioni, in the room, and Mr. Paul Kikuchi, our chief financial officer, and Mr. Barry Musagaro there, standing inside by the red board. Uh, head of our water resources division. So feel free, I know we're not part of the program officially, uh, but if you have questions, feel free to come up to uh, any one of us. The Board of Water Supply does not support the proposed Red Hill AOC and Vessel W as written. The documents lack public transparency, corrective action specificity, and the immediate implementation of improvements that will protect our groundwater and the environment. The BWS appreciates the long and hard work of the EPA, DOH, Navy, and DLA to develop the proposed AOC and SOW. Unfortunately, the contents do not adequately address our concerns about the facility storing 187 million gallons of fuel located just 100 feet above a state designated drinking water aquifer. It also doesn't mitigate fuel contaminants already in the groundwater underneath the facility and the rest of the corroding uh, condition of the tank's thin quarter-inch steel wall and their fortification to minimize the risk of a large fuel release contaminating the aquifer. The aquifer is the only one of its kind and there are no cost-effective alternatives that can replace it. BWS does not want the wells that presently our wells show no contamination to become con contaminated in the future. At what point do the studies required by the AOC and SOW to determine the best practicable available technology become actions for implementation? Studies could potentially continue for years in the name of practicality while the existing situation remains unchanged. The tank fight leak which occurred even after a com uh, completing a multi-year clean, inspect, repair, and modernization process does, does does not demonstrate that the status quo approach is protective of the environment and our drinking water. The AOC needs to require cleanup of the contamination that is presently in the groundwater and the rocks underneath the tanks to reduce the amount available for migration to those parts of the aquifer that are still uncontaminated. The absence of free product does not preclude the finding and controlling constituents already dissolved in the water. Also, the ALC and SOW needs to include stakeholders and the public in an open process that requires the immediate installation of improvements that will protect the groundwater and the environment. The ALC administrative record indicates past studies identify potential, uh, that identify potential improvements that, interestingly enough, enough have not yet been acted upon. Further delays in taking action places our drinking water and the environment at risk and defers to Improvement opportunity is vital to the protection and future sustainability of our underground sources of drinking water. The BWS will be submitting formal written com uh, comments on the proposed ALC and SW by the July 1st deadline, which will be made available on our website. And we will also post this brief testimony on our website. That's at boardofwatersupply.com, boardofwatersupply.com. We are also requesting an extension of the July 1st comment deadline that Tom mentioned to allow us to review documents that cannot be copied and disseminated because of copyright rights right. that were listed in the right. administrative record and not available until now, midway through the comment period. Huh. The extension will give us the full 30-day review period originally established on the first day of the AOC and SLW uh, when they were announced, which was June 1st. I know the uh, EPA mentioned the Department of Health about posting information online for the public to do that. Uh, we already have that online for you, and it's a uh, keyword searchable. Uh, the, uh, all the uh, documents that we were able to obtain from, from the administrative records, uh, it's located at, uh, this is the URL, uh, 
http colon forward slash forward slash data dot hawaii open data dot org forward slash data dot hawaii open data dot org thank you for the opportunity to testify this evening and share our perspective on this very important matter hola ikabai e malama ikabai e kuliano ko kako life is in fresh water we must care for this water that is our responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very powerful testimony. Boy, the water is a My name is Philip Wong. Uh, I've lived in Moanalo pretty much all my life. And that's why I'm here when I saw it on the news last night. The wells on the news is right at the end of my history. I'll make this short because uh, I'm not too familiar with the um, AOC and I, I cannot comment uh, at this time. I pretty much just heard about it. So I'll turn in written testimony at a later date. Uh, thank you very much. Hello and thank you. My name is Carol Cox. I'm uh, just a citizen here a little bit. Just interested in my drinking water, your drinking water, and good government and transparent government. But first of all, Mr. Lau, thank you. Yes. I, I must tell you that having a government background and what have you, uh, it was painful to sit through this process. Right. It, it was uh, a bit overdone because we want to know what the people say, and yet we're going to have a 30 day period of pressure. But you've already pretty much formalized it. So that tells me the fix is on. And I, I hate to say that if it's taken personal, no problem. But we cannot accept that. That's right. So I ask that you, EPA and the DOH, reject this and return to the tables of regulating rather than participating and inoculating the Navy from right. their violations. There are spills that have occurred millions of gallons, and you know it in 1998, for example. Where was the vigor then? Why didn't we have these resources brought to us then? Why didn't you act on these tank issues? Why? So, all of a sudden, there's this newfound interest in doing what's right and cleaning up the environment, and you've had a number of chances. And by the way, we know that, in fact, that the Navy reports to the state those records were not proved properly. We know that EALs were lifted, raised with the, by the state. So if the EALs detected chemicals in the, if chemicals were detected in the water, then EALs were assigned. They exceeded the EALs, so the state went back and changed them. So that suggests right there, if there's chemicals in them needing to and exceeding EALs, you already know that they're there. Where was the vigor in doing that? Where was this meeting? Why didn't you notify the public? It's rigor. You are obligated by law to tell us and participate. So I ask that uh, you reject this immediately, and I'm dumbfounded as to why Mr. Lau, though he's not a regulatory body, is not put in this in the upfront. He has our best interest at hand, and I have lots more to say, but the time is, is important. But again, please reject this. You know that there are more chemicals in the water than you're letting out, right. and you play with words, and, and I ask that you declare this a bad deal and reject it completely. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Cox from the radio. Environment. And the last one is probably the worst. 
the actions required by this OAC may be necessary to protect health and environment. Uh, the other item I want to cover quickly is the funding. Uh, according to this agreement, there are penalties that will be applied. Uh, the funding process will be in the normal uh, budget process that the Navy uses. And according, I think that this project is a major contract comes under that category, which is, um, um, comes under the Milcon uh, project program. And this program fits this project against all other projects in the military. So, Funding is very important. Without funding, you won't be able to do anything. Uh, it takes a lot of work on the congressional delegations to obtain funding. And I don't think they're any, in any position at present to do that. Thank you.
me if if you haven't seen him, uh, you might be really interested in seeing the documentary Semper Fi, Always, uh, Always Faithful. It's about the water pollution at uh, Camp Lyceum in North Carolina, and the military behavior in that does not give me a lot of confidence in what's going on now. Thank you. Thank you. You should be
The Department of Health says that it's safe, but we have no epidemiology studies to uh, show that it hasn't caused an increase in cancer or learning disabilities or all of the other things, autism, Alzheimer's, all of these diseases, that where do they come from? Well, maybe it comes from drinking jet fuel in your water. <laughs> I tried to read the statement of work. I couldn't get past the first page because it said it was going to take 20 years to fix this problem. It seems to me that we should be immediately taking these fuel tanks offline. We should be cleaning up the groundwater that's already leaked, the fuel is leaked into it. And as far as I know, a 20 year project is an extremely unrealistic way to approach anything. Take it offline, fix one tank at a time, and figure it out as you go along. I, I don't think that this plan is, is uh, the best approach. It's not fast enough. Thank you. Thank you. Senator McCaffrey. Hello, Mike Arco. Aloha. Uh, my name is Senator Mike Gabbard, and as a member of the Red Hill <clears throat> Fuel Storage Facility Task Force and the current chair of the Senate Water, Land, and Agriculture Committee, I'd like to offer the following comments on the recently signed uh, AOC. I also want to mention before I get into my remarks is that the Senate and the House, we passed a concurrent resolution that extends the task force, and it also means now the task force includes the congressional delegation, which is a good thing because after all, that's what we're really talking about here, right? And secondly, which is something I found out in one of the task force meetings, is that in addition to these 20 tanks, there is another 26 tanks that when I asked at one of the meetings, I said, what's the status of these tanks that are also over 70 years old? No one really had an answer. So we are also looking at those additional 26 tanks. So, uh, given that there were delays in reaching an agreement, it was a positive step that the EPA, the DOH, Navy, and DLA tentatively agreed to the AOC. This document does require that the Navy and the DLA to make improvements to the tanks, which must be approved by the EPA and DOH to better protect our water supply. I know that during the 22-year timeline for the AOC, the Navy has agreed to shut down any tank that doesn't meet, quote, best available practical technology, unquote. This agreement, also, this agreement also allows the Navy and DLA to initiate pilot programs which incorporate the latest advanced technologies. So these are important actions. However, one thing that I and many people in the public are feeling is that there is a lack of urgency in moving forward with these needed improvements. Yeah. And based on the fact that these 20 tanks, which can each hold 12 and a half million gallons of fuel, are just 100 feet above 25% of the island's drinking water is an enormous concern for our future. With this in mind, I'm suggesting that in addition to the initial two-year study put forth in the AOC, the Navy and the DLA move as quickly as possible to upgrading the fuel release prevention and detection facility. This is urgently needed to calm public fears and to show good faith that the Navy and the DLA are serious about being good stewards of our precious environment. Without an additional commitment, it is unlikely that the AOC will gain widespread community support. Mahalo for considering that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Pahino. I'm from Nanakuri. And uh, as a Hawaiian, I feel I have the right to speak up against people that come to our islands and pollute and abuse our islands our people in their quest for world domination. I'm glad I came tonight and now realize as a taxpayer, I'm actually contributing to more possible pollution in the future to our groundwater and the environment. My other concerns about the tanks are that they're hazardous and can explode. What I'm hearing tonight is that the military has polluted our groundwater 
And some of you are actually here to help them continue to jeopardize our health and safety and our island and its people. I will be honest with you guys. I do have issues and concerns with the military in the United States, and they are valid concerns, starting from the whole tone of our kingdom to the damages and danger they're putting us in. I personally want them to leave. It's like a damn if you do and damn if you don't situation. They're supposed to be here to protect us from the dangers of the other countries. But because they occupy our islands, they're actually putting a big bullseye on our islands from their enemies. It is the fact that the military is polluting our islands and that they are not cleaning it, cleaning it up or doing anything about it. They did it to Kao Labe. They did it to Mokua Valley. They're bombing Schofield. And, and they're just, I mean, they have a past history of doing this, and they're not cleaning it, cleaning it up. You know, uh, and, excuse me. It's a fact that the military will continue to do what they like, and there's nothing they can do tonight that's going to change that. I'm totally against helping the military or anyone that has polluted our island and wants to continue to pollute it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is David Hinchy. I'll, I'll pass because we're running so late. This program is supposed to be a day there. Oh, you want to come up there? <laughs> you can they bring the mic over. Oh. Yes, my name is David Hinchy, and I will not give a testimony because it's already 8.25, and this meeting was supposed to end at 8.30. So I'll just pass and let other people have the opportunity to speak. Okay. <laughs> I'm Bisha Kai. I live in the Salt Lake area near the high school. We were about the first residents in this area. The, we're worried about the contamination of the jet fuel from the tanks. The Board of Water Supply has never told us what the health effects could be, and that was the question that I had. We're worried about contamination. What are the health effects? I have had cancer for 10 years. My next door neighbor on one side, one, his father died, the son has cancer. On the other side, the woman died of cancer. Up the block, another woman died. And I'm told, since I am still under uh, chemotherapy, that even low levels of contaminant could affect my health. Does that mean I have to go to bottled water from now on? I will be on chemotherapy until I die. The health department has not told us any of the health effects of even low level contamination. The AOC, talks about many things, but it seems to me that the tanks are old and they're going to start leaking. If they are going to start leaking, is it possible to put another coat or layer and then close that so that we do not have a leak or a slow leak? Thank you. My name is Christine Schiebrecher, and I'm a Honolulu resident. Um, as a member of the public, I want to say I was very impressed and appreciate the work of the task force members because those guys put in a lot of work to get um, where we are today with the AOC. Um, that being said, I have some respectful comments on the document. And the first was I wanted to reiterate um, Senator Gabbard's comment that there doesn't seem to be a sense of urgency um, especially when it's been established that there have been multiple releases of contaminants into the groundwater. And so I think um, with, for the AOC, if it's possible, we could um, really use a lot more detail in the document. Um, so uh, along with the sense of urgency, I think the first order of business would be to install more monitoring wells 
in appropriate locations around the facility and to immediately start monitoring for petroleum, especially since no one agrees which direction the groundwater is flowing. Um, because I like to say, you know, according to the AOC, the deliverables are the report based on the data. Well, you can do the work with uh, not very good data, or you can do the work with com complete data. And so I think we should get good data and then do the work. Okay, so um, uh, a second point is there does not seem to be an emergency response plan in place for a leak in the, in the facility. Um, neither the Navy's groundwater protection plan nor the AOC document itself references an emergency response plan specifically for that facility. Um, particularly, the AOC says that um, the Navy and the DLA shall take all appropriate actions to prevent or minimize the threat and then notify the regulatory agency. So to me, that sounds like quick, do something, but there's no plan. So I'd like to see the AOC specify the development of an emergency response plan. Okay, next, there, uh, there does not seem to be any short-term short plan for recovery or remediation for existing contamination that may be detected in the groundwater as monitoring continues. Um, and by the way, uh, Section 6 of the AOC, or the statement of the work, says that um, there, it mentions remediation. I thought it was remediation of the contamination. It's actually remediation of the tanks. So I'd like to know how they're going to address any ambiguities in the document. Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to ask that they include something about uh, control of possible galvanic current in the tanks that are not scheduled for upgrade for the next 15 years. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Yi Gucci. I have a couple comments on the AOC. One of them is the tightness testing. Uh, you identify it. I wish that you complete use the EPA certified tightness uh, methods or standards. The other one that I'd like you guys to consider is raising the penalty. By raising the penalty to one million dollars a day, that will change the cost of benefit ratio and will make it more urgent for the Navy to take some kind of action for remediation. The next item that I'd like you guys to consider is also to change the funding source. There is no milk on. There's a moratorium right now. So there needs to be other provisions where other funding sources can be used or utilized. The LA has funds that they can use in CAPTA. OMA funds can be utilized as well. So I would ask you guys to consider that. The last thing is that I'd like you guys to consider installing or constructing a new tank within the old tank so that it can be comparable to the current EPA, EAST standards as well as USD standards. That's all I have. <laughs> Senator Laura Thielen. Aloha, good evening. Uh, my name is Laura Thielen. I'm a state senator for Kailua, Wamealo, and Hawaii Kai. I'm here tonight because I understand the aquifer where these tanks sit above provides a quarter of the drinking water for the urban Honolulu area, which includes from Wala to Hawaii But I'm also here as a Windward resident because if that aquifer is contaminated, the Board of Water Supply is not going to have any option but to start to draw from other aquifers around the island. That's going to overpump and impact the aquifers on every area of our island. It's also going to impact our streams because some users are going to be forced onto stream waters. And so many of the battles that were fought to return waters from the streams to our nearshore waters to restore the riparian environments and the nearshore ocean blue eyes are going to be impacted as well. I'm here tonight to ask you to reject the proposed right. AOC and to go back to the table to renegotiate it. The reason is this. These tanks are already 72 to 75 years old. If you're going to spend the next 25 years upgrading them, that means you plan to continue using them beyond that. The tanks will be 100 years old at the end of the time period of this AOC. Now, according to the Navy documents, and this was presented to the legislature in the task force report, the Navy's a member of the task force, these tanks have been leaking since 1947. The 
The Department of Health was not made aware of that until 1998. The Navy is unable to quantify the amount of fuel that was released into the environment prior to that period. In 1998, they did core samples and found that there's petroleum leaks under 20, uh, 19 of the 20 tanks in the basalt rock. And they found that the groundwater monitoring wells that are near tank five and six have petroleum in 12 to 20 times the rate of the DOH acceptable level. Now the Navy said, don't worry, because what we're going to do is we're going to adopt the highest standard for tank inspections and repairs and maintenance. Well, guess what? Tank 5 had just finished that highest standard of tank repairs and maintenance and inspections that was supposed to ensure that it was operable for the next 20 years. And when they refilled it, it didn't last 20 days. It released 27,000 gallons of fuel into the environment. These tanks are beyond their life expectancy. Over three periods in the last 40 years, work was done to extend the life expectancy of these tanks, and we're at the end of it now. So I'm asking the Department of Health, on behalf of the state, to please renegotiate this AOC to require the tanks to be replaced or upgraded to modern standards. And there is nothing, for people who are worried about the fact that we're going to be standing still, there is nothing that would prevent the Navy from being a good neighbor to start to implement immediately the groundwater monitoring and testing work that needs to be done. That's right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot one last comment, but when we're talking about the cost analysis and the feasibility studies, the only thing that's mentioned in the AOC is the cost to the Navy of replacement. I'm also asking that the State Department of Health and EPA require the Navy and itself to do a cost analysis of what's the cost to the taxpayers of the right. world. Supported by the Board of Water Supply 
way, and for a list of good reasons, which I'm anxious to hear more about. Um, also, um, you know, when I spend some time in the mountains up in Kahuku, I notice a lot of trash from the military. Um, when they're doing their exercises, they leave their trash everywhere, their food trash. It's supposed to be come and picked up, but obviously someone's slacking. And uh, it's an interesting point to hear about the other uh, Pacific Island people that have had to be shipped here because their their reefs are polluted, they can't eat there, and uh, it's just dangerous. Um, statistic I just looked at that uh, makes me sad, another thing about the military is the 42,000 innocent Vietnamese people that are still being killed or have been since 1975 by undetonated landmines that still exist today. Um, I just have to wonder if we really need to sit around and wait to see that it's a coincidence that um, neighbors upon neighbors upon neighbors have these cancers. And, uh, you know, if it takes 20 years to, to redo these archaic um, leaking storage tanks, then um, should we just weigh out the fact that it is probably just a couple weeks to drain them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still have a lot of people here waiting to testify. Apparently, a lot of the testifiers have uh, left. Here we go. Aloha, my name is Hong Sai. I'm here to offer testimony and comments regarding your proposed administrative order of consent. Regarding the continuing problems of leaking fuel from your Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility, I'm here to speak on behalf of the Oahu Council of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, of which there are 27 clubs throughout the island of Oahu. As Native Hawaiians and leaders in our communities, we are deeply concerned about what we consider to be a significant and serious threat to our island's fresh water supply. We wish to bring to your attention the Department of Defense's recently approved policy for consultation with Native Hawaiians and ask that our council be immediately included in any further discussions or actions relating to this problem, which can affect all of us on Oahu, Native Hawaiians and non-Hawaiians alike. I will speak briefly about the cultural and religious significance of our island's fresh water supply to the Hawaiian people. In centuries past, when the islands were first inhabited by our people, we were able to sustain ourselves and survive despite being the most remote group of islands in the world. A mama ma'i care for the water, was among our most important cultural values, containing within these words the kuleana, the responsibility of our people to protect this resource so critical to our survival. To be wealthy was to be dry life, to have an abundance of water resources. The kanavai became the law of the land for our people, and water resources were strictly safeguarded by our kupuna pahiko. Our water resources also have religious significance, and to heal life was to engage in a fresh water cleansing among the many ceremonies in which water played a key part. From ancient times, even until today, Hawaiian ceremonies, blessings, and practices utilize our island's fresh water in our religious practices. So we consider the fresh water resources underlying the moku of Yapa and Kona, Oahu, for the purpose of commenting on this draft document, we wish to inform you that the waters beneath the Red Hill Bulk Fuel Storage Facility are indeed important to Native Hawaiians for cultural, religious, and practical purposes. We cannot survive, we cannot live without good quality, fresh water. These fuel tanks, this, these fuel tank leaks uh, pose constant and immediate threats to our island's uh, largest aquifer and, in our view, should be considered a homeland security matter rather than addressed merely by an administrative order of consent. That's an emergency. It is an emergency. Nonetheless, we begin by offering our mahalo to those of you who have advocated for protection of our precious water resources and for swift and permanent corrective actions to deal with these chronic fuel leaks into the aquifer. I'm almost done. Sorry. I'm just going to give you the six uh, priorities that we have from the Oahu Council. Okay, we request that the administrative order of consent be amended to address comments offered in our seven-page testimony. 
with our priorities as follows. Number one, consultation with Native Hawaiians. Include the own council and future consultation regarding this matter. Number two, the Navy and DLA should acknowledge that they are responsible for the problem of the leaking tanks and will be responsible for correcting the problem. The AOC they deny it all the time. Uh, number three, the Navy DLA should begin an incremental program of relocating, replacing, or rehabilitating each of the currently active fuel tanks, at least two per year, until all 20 tanks have been corrected, with a time period of no more than 10 years for these actions to be performed. You need to give them a limit, a time limit. The Navy and DLA should begin a program to remove the contaminated soil wherever possible. Number five, fuel tanks that are not currently in service should be removed or eliminated from active use. Yeah. All costs associated with monitoring, testing, treating contaminated soil from water should be borne by the Navy and DLA, which should also reimburse state and county agencies that are affected by the Red Hill fuel leak problem. So we shouldn't have to pay for That's their right. mistakes. That's right. Okay, number uh, seven, this is the last one. All information relating to this problem, including updated information on results of soil and water monitoring testing, progress of work, and minutes of meetings should be included on a new website dedicated to the corrective action at Red Hill and should be accessible to our consumers. We appreciate the time and attention given to this matter by all the parties, and we hope you will take to heart the recommendations we have offered and readily agree to make the changes we have offered. Mahalo. Aloha mai kako. My name is Rocky Kalohiva, and I am the Oahu representative of the Ahaboku Committee, a committee comprised of Native Hawaiian practitioners. I wish to inform you that we practitioners are deeply concerned that this proposed administrative order of consent may go forward unamended. I wish to offer our agreement with Mayanami Cipher and the Oahu Council of Hawaiian Civic Club's testimony as our own. Mahalo. Oh, aloha mai. To Mr. Uh, Tom Peterman and uh, to Mr. Stuart Yamada, members of the team, I certainly uh, want to introduce myself. My name is Dante Piala Carpenter, a concerned citizen born in Hawaii whose residence is in the Salt Lake area here in Honolulu. I've occupied elected positions as a former state senator, trustee and administrator of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, as well as councilman and mayor of the Big Island of Hawaii. Further, I am a consulting engineer, a retired naval officer, and recent past chairman of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Additionally, for the last 18 years, I've been president of the Country Club Village, Phase 2 Condominium Association, which has some 469 units in two 20-story buildings just on the road. I'm also a, a represent, as its president, the Com Com Country Club Village Complex Community Facilities Maintenance Association with a total of 942 units, including the 469 just mentioned. That represents roughly between 1,200 and 1,500 residents who consume fresh water daily from these aquifers. I want to thank Ernie Lau and the Board of Water Supply officials for bringing this matter of the Red Hill tank needed problem and continued concerns for contamination of our community's drinking water supply. Thanks to the EPA, State Department of Health, and U.S. Navy officials for engaging in the Administrative Board of Consent um, and inviting public comment. Uh, it was earlier in, 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 I think, it was a humorous term. The, uh, the reference to the AOC was in infamous order. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I believe that that may be absolutely true. But I grew up in a place called David Track, just down the road, in the proximity of Pearl Harbor, and I witnessed with my older brother several attacking aircraft in what was the beginning of World War II. My father, then a retired Navy airman and honorable policeman, was familiar with the construction of the Red Hill Ports uh, storage tanks at its onset. To my recollection, there have been at least a dozen people killed in the construction and many, many hurt in that same construction and development. In the Merchant Marine Academy, many years later after graduating, 
I was completing my active duty in the Navy as well, and assigned to several Pacific Fleet destroyers and other facilities at Pearl Harbor for Navy Reserve active duty training. This has given me a thorough understanding of the various storage methodologies and transportation methods unique to marine fuels, including viscous bunker C, diesel, and kerosene, which were the original uh, quantities and qualities used in the facility uh, and using gravity to uh, fuel the ships during World War II. I did have the occasion as a reserve active duty officer to actually go into the storage tank farm and actually went inside one of the tanks undergoing cleaning and testing. I gotta tell you, it's an awesome sight. And certainly feeling inside that tank with the nearly a football field long uh, height of that and 35 yards in diameter at the, at the end of that uh, back wall of there. These tanks are huge and it's uh, certainly an awesome sight and an awesome feeling. The obviously the scaffolding rigging and worker safety factors required are quite extensive just to clean it up. And not to mention the actual quality of repairs required to ensure no leakage. Let me just try and finish it up as fast as I can. But I, I, I did note in the Federal Register, the volume 76, number 223, dated Friday, November 11, 2011, 40 CFR parts 281, a revision to existing underground storage tank regulations, which discuss leaking underground storage tanks, also known as LUST, L U S T, and contains 88 pages of proposed rules which appear to be necessary for the AOC to become effective. Further, as I guess, I think I need to ask you, has that LUST proposal, uh, which was uh, offered in 2011, been adopted as of this date? Because if it hasn't, then that's that much more time it will take before you can even begin your process. Finally, 2016 is the approaching of the 70, 75th year of the Red Hill fuel storage tank installation. Evaluations under AOC are projected to take minimum of two years, assuming expedited decisions are in the works, thereafter construction contracts drafted, bids awarded, that date may be well beyond 2020. At that point in time, these tasks will be almost 80 years old and beyond, with all of that, what that entails. Going forward, I think the people of the state of Hawaii and the communities therein need your prompt action to properly address this long-standing issue. I certainly look forward to continue working with you to make this effort a reality, and if there is a need for congressional uh, delegation and state government official support, I want to uh, offer uh, myself, I, I know that Senator Gabbard um, uh, earlier, and certainly I know he has Washington, D.C. influence as well. But I think um, we are all, this is an all hands evolution, and I think you cannot only depend upon your uh, inherent uh, minimum size committee, uh, because this is, this is some of the effects uh, three fourths of the population of the island of Oahu which exceeds 1.5 million people. So thank you very much, I appreciate your attendance, and thank you very much for holding this public hearing.
had millions of dollars. Okay, we have representatives here that will ver verify that. And that's with the technology, supposedly. Now, this tanks were built 75 years ago. I don't know what kind of steel was available back then, but they did pour concrete. Now, those of you who have chain link fences, right? What do you use for the post? Steel, galvanized steel, very in what? On concrete. Okay. And I, I have one in my house. I've lived in my house 30 years, and I noticed that it starts rusting at the bottom. So, the concern is there. Okay, you got old uh, steel buried underground that may leak and leak dangerous chemical that's prohibited by the BWS, World Water Sea Power, in terms of contaminants that's not supposed to go into the aquifer. Uh, aquifer. Finally, one last comment on the AOC. Uh, I'm a lawyer by training, and so I, I looked at uh, what's, you know, what's the administrative appeal process. It will take you, before you can even go to court, over 180 days for the parties to first resolve the dispute. You have to go through this process, okay? It goes all the way from the, the parties, all the way to the Secretary of the Navy. I think it's the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Uh, it goes all the way from to the EPA and then Secretary of the Navy and then I believe also the Secretary of Defense. I'm not sure, but all the way up there. My point is this, you can't just go run to court if there's disagreement among the parties and ask for an injunction. Folks, an injunction is one where a party will say there's an imminent harm coming. We want you to stop the Navy or the DLA from using these tanks. And the court will review it and will issue an immediate injunction. Well, under this AOC, they, the parties can't do that. They gotta wait at least 180 days. And my, my calculation is 195 days for the process to run before they can then go to court. So that's the concern. So thank you very much.
We've heard in this presentation that sheer size is a constraint in terms of time and cost, but that is a responsibility that the Navy took on when they decided to build these tanks. If they weren't able to take care of them, they shouldn't have built them. That responsibility only became heavier day by day as they enjoyed the use and benefit of these tanks while the residents carried the risk. It was mentioned that fines will be levied if action is not taken in a timely fashion, but it's been over 70 years. We know that there's been leaks as far back as 1947, 2002, we heard tanks, 19 of the 20 tanks speaking. I, I believe that qualifies as not timely action. <laughs> So the question is, have there been any fines or consequences at all? I don't think there have been. Besides, all the actors are publicly funded, so we're paying no matter what. Right. You haven't left us many good options, but of the three, I would advocate to reopen negotiations and drain the tanks in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. One suggestion was made that they double line the tanks, and the Navy has said that they have reservations because of costs and because of the um, reduction in tank capacity. I find that so offensive when you're talking about the health and quality of water and the concern of that their 12 million gallon tank will be able to carry a little bit less. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that tells me that their main concern is for themselves and not for our water. It sounds clear that the Board of Water Supply has concrete recommendations that haven't been taken into account and haven't been incorporated into the AOC. I think that would be a logical place to start. Two tanks have been taken offline of the original 20, and the others can be two, and that would be what I would want. Yeah. In closing, one of the stories that were presenting earlier said, heaven forbid that the AOC be reopened to the public comment. I found that really hurtful in this setting where all these people right. came out to offer their public comment. Right. And I asked if that kind of thing would not be made. And I also wanted to be very, very sure for the record that almost every single person who talked is asking that this be reopened and not be approved as is. Right. That's all. I'm going to call on Marsha Joyner, David Press, as well this evening. Here's Marsha. We talked to her earlier this evening. Aloha, Kako. Aloha. Oh, come on, wake up. Aloha. Aloha. I didn't say that, I said aloha, Kako. Aloha. Aloha. Okay. All right. Uh, I am uh, opposed to the AOC. Thank you. And I have lots of reasons, most of which have already been stated. But in this statement, it says, the DOH, EPA, and the Navy working on the administrative order of consent. Nowhere, nowhere did you include the Board of Water Supply. For us, the people that drink this water, that use the water, that use this land, they are us. They are the ones that represent us, and you didn't include them. Why is that not, why are they not included in the negotiations? Is there a reason for that? I mean, that really disturbs me and I find it really offensive that they were left out. And in fact, if the Board of Water Supply had not sent this letter to every customer, none of us would have known that you were having this hearing. Yeah. You didn't send this letter to we did not get one word from the Navy, which we're used to them not informing us. I mean, we, we, we've been down that road, okay. And let me tell you one side note. One person talked about them not cleaning up. One day in April 1984, I was doing a documentary up at Waikani, up in the mountains of Waikani. Uh, yes. And I took a step back and stepped on a World War II bomb. So I know firsthand that they don't clean up. And then they said it was too expensive to clean it up. So what is this with them? And, and they drink the same water. As long as they're on this island, they're drinking the same 
say, well, what are we on? And how the hell can they say, oh, well, we'll get around to it. I, I, mean, I am totally offended by this whole thing. And yes, I am, uh, want us to relook at this thing. The one last thing that no one talked about, when it is absorbed into the ground, people grow vegetables. We eat the farmland. Did anybody talk about that? Where do you suppose the cancer comes from? Not just drinking water, but you eat the vegetables. You lay in the grass. Your children run and play. Did anybody talk about that? No. So, again, thank you. And thank you for your time. Aloha, my name is Ashley Gutierrez. Um, I like to say that I'm speaking on behalf of all the people that, you know, graduated from here within the past five years. And I'm glad to say that I'm finally waking up to realize what's going on. I have few important questions that I like to be addressed. Um, first of all, I lived in Wanua Valley for five years. After, on my sixth birthday, my father died of cancer. What a surprise. Allison spoke about that, and that got to me. If that doesn't get 20 of you here, I understand why you guys haven't acted quickly. Because you don't understand. It's not only the money that you pay with here, but the children, their future. And I'm standing here 22 years later, and I've lived in the mainland, cursed this state, but I'm back and I'm not leaving. And I want to make sure that the Navy understands that, the military understands that. We're here. We've been here. Where have you guys come from? Why would this even bother you? It bothers us most. And the other lady clearly made a statement. They did not want consult the people that live there. How will they compensate those who are affected by this bill? Can we have a copy of the risk management and safety policy published for review by the community? They say Navy cannot fix for a minimum of two years. Remember, I'm 22 years old. My father died when I was six years old of cancer. What is, you know, the evidence is all laid out, right in front of our eyes. Do they have other tanks that have potential leaks on our other islands? Is there any way they can possibly operate um, the tanks on ships or other places? And don't you guys think that you should figure out the flow pattern before you even decide to dig up the Aina? That's all I have to say. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. So the names up there. Corey Yogi. Corey Scott. Corey Yogi. Hello, my name is Corinne Yogi, and I'm a resident of Wangwo Valley. Our family was one of the first to live in that valley. So when we were living there, we would see pigs walk up and down the roads, the owls fly at night, and you don't see that anymore. What's disturbing about what I found out tonight is that the information provided didn't allay my fears. It heightened it. I've heard about the contamination, but didn't know how bad it was. It disturbs me that the U.S. Navy could not account for this leakage, that that much fuel was not accounted for in their inventory. And so it's 
got me more scared because what else don't they know? And I've heard things mentioned about draining the tanks. And if you look at that picture there, you see how centralized the tanks are. And I've heard that within the time frame that they will fix or attempt to fix the tanks, it will be 20 years. The tanks will be almost 100 years old. What other problems will arise? The tanks are so close to our aquifers, I heard no mention of emergency contingency plans that if a major catastrophe happens, where will we get the water from? How will it affect not just our islands, but the whole state? Because everyone is affected by one community. We are not that large a community that what we feel here will affect the Hui, will affect Kilo. So I just want more answers. I don't want you to sign up on it, commit us to this, and then we found out later that we needed more addressing to problems we didn't know was there. So thank you, everyone.
So we will be inviting you, I don't know, whatever is that process, but I do expect the Navy, the EPA, the Department of Health, and we will also bring the Board of Water Supply to the table. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Lau, thank you so much. I don't know what the process is to make that happen, but this is something that all of our communities need to do. They came from Ko'olau Koko, Ko'olau Loa, they came from Pro City, so it's not just the Moana Lua or what you right. folks. Right. Because like the ladies, uh, previous folks have stated, this is gonna affect all of us. This is a small picture, but of our aquifers, and this is how it affects us. This is how the water moves. And so although they've only identified these wells that affected Moana Lua to Hawaii Kai, if we don't fix this in a timely manner, it's gonna affect all of us in one way or another. So we need to all invite them to our communities because it's years of discovery, undisclosed. It's years that they have taken two years to write this report, this proposed administrative order of consent. But they give us one meeting, two hours, two minutes. Facebook friends. 
Do we really need this large war machine that is so large to be so life-threatening just to maintain? The Hawaiian culture has so much to, to, to offer the world, to teach us, teach us alternative priorities and methods of pro problem solving. There's also, I, I also wanted to note, uh, there's, I think, there's uh, two different ideas in the room that there's only one aquifer being um, affected, but I think that um, a large, another large aquifer is also uh, in da being in danger, which is the Pearl, Pearl Harbor aquifer. Um, I think someone said, I think I read somewhere where uh, it's coming within a mile, the creek, the slow creek is, or maybe not so slow creek is happening. Um, within a mile of our Halal Aquifer, which is a, a smaller part of our of our Harbor Aquifer, is that correct? No? Yes? No. Okay. So anyway, that's what I heard. And so I just think that the world is changing with our technology. There's got to be better ways. And Maybe we don't need this. My my thing is, I think we should shut those down. Shut them down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the formal <laughs> comment period. We appreciate you coming out. Have a good evening, and drive home safe.